Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I have something new here to show you today. This is the Freebie Fly Tower Plus, and this is the mini version. Uh, F4 flight controller, it has 20 by 20 millimeter mounting holes on here. Uh, so it is smaller, it's for the smaller size quadcopters, but the biggest reason that I wanted to review this one is the fact that this one makes your builds a lot easier. Uh, all you really have to do is solder up your AIO camera, your receiver, and your three motor wires on each side of the ESC stack on the bottom here, and you're pretty much good to go. So this is one of those all-in-one flight controller OSD BEC combos, built-in LC filter on here. You have four in one BL Heli ESC 20 amp D-Shot. I believe those are D-Shot 600s on here. So uh, pretty cool that this has 20 amp, which means you can run larger motors on this setup, like some 1106s or the 1104s. You can run this up to three and four S. So uh, I've shown you guys stuff, stuff very similar to this before on the channel, but it was important for me today to show you this one because this is sort of where I'm going with some of my larger micro builds, uh, larger battery builds coming up on the channel. So um, I'm going to use this frame right here uh, for this particular build and I might actually add those new Emacs 1106 motors on here uh, just to spice it up a little bit and I've already got these little prop guards on the outside of this one. Uh, by the way, I'll try to put a link down below for this frame if you're interested in this one. It's actually pretty cool. It has a little camera that rides up on top right here, put your receiver back there and your flight controller in the middle and you will have to offset this one to a 45 degree angle because it does sit at a 45 degree angle uh, on this particular frame but that's not what this video is all about this is all about this fly tower plus mini f4 and uh, this one's been out for a little while but i just got a fresh copy of it in this week and uh, i wanted to show you how easy it was and um, just show you the layout of how things go on here. Some of you guys probably have some questions about that. So uh, right away, let me go ahead and get started with the flight controller itself. Now we're looking at this board from the top and there's no arrow on this, which indicates which way this thing is supposed to face for forward. Um, so if you're looking at it from the rear, this is gonna be the rear right here and your power cable is gonna come off the back side of your ESCs right here. USB is gonna be in the very back. Sometimes it's on the side, so that might be confusing, but this is facing forward right here. So all these ports up here will be in the front, your USB in the back. Your F4 chip is right here and your power terminals are soldered right onto this port right here to power the VBAT uh, coming from the battery. So you have power to your flight controller. You also have LED on here, so power status indicators, uh, LEDs on here as well. And it does have a built-in OSD chip on the very bottom of it here, on the bottom of this board, and it's not labeled on the top, which is, you know, there's not quite enough room up here to be able to get labels on the top part of this uh, silk screen on here. So we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna show you starting off with your boot pins and the boot pins are simply at the very top of this stack right over on this side. We're looking, I'll just turn it this way so it's right with a schematic and I'll try to put the schematic up on the screen for you. Uh, starting over on this side is the boot and we have the next one over is going to be your RX1, your TX1 and then that down from that, we will have the LED and the S bus connector, LED here and your S bus here. And then below that, we actually have two five volt and two ground ports just below that right there. Uh, the next one down, the final one, all the way down is gonna be where you hook up your buzzer, positive and negative terminals right here. So uh, that's what that entire port system is right there on that side. Now let's go ahead and take a look at where your video camera hooks up. I'm just gonna spin it around this way so you can see this on the screen. If you make your screen a little bigger, full screen, you'll be able to see this a little better. Um, starting up at the very top, we have video in. Um, the next port down is gonna be video out, five volt and ground. And what those are for are for showing and displaying your OSD on your goggles. Um, so you'll need to hook up all four camera wires going back to your all-in-one camera to make sure that this video uh, OSD displays correctly on your video. 
Now I just wanted to flip this over again uh, to show you guys up close again uh, from the top and just explain where the receiver and things like that go. Um, starting off, this board uses Omnibus flight controller um, firmware. So if you need to reflash this board, usually when I get a new board, I will go ahead and flash it first before I start starting up anything. And I'll go ahead and start setting up uh, my receiver after that. Um, so to do that, you have two terminals right here, and those are your boot terminals. What you need to do is take a pair of tweezers or something, connect them to here, uh, make sure that you short out both of these two terminals and then hook it up to beta flight or clean flight this board will accept either one so no big deal there now if you're using dsmx and i'm not going to leave you spectrum guys out uh, if you want to hook up your spectrum receiver on here it's pretty easy all you're going to do is take your signal wire and hook it up to the second one down right here this is rx1 and then you're going to do your positive wire to this one right here which is 3.3 volt right there on that side uh, all the way down almost to the last, this last row right here, second to last, is your ground ports right there. So either one of those two terminals, you can hook up your black wire to. So then you'll have your Spectrum DSMX receiver hooked up. Now, if you're a FR Sky guy and you're using SBUS or you're using PPM, the third one from the left, this one right here, this is gonna be for your signal wire for your PPM or SBUS. And then your positive is gonna be five volt here, the third one from the right. And the next one down is gonna be your ground uh, for your black cable. Now, by the way, if you're trying to flash this board for the first time and you're shorting out these two terminals right here, make sure you don't make the mistake trying to hook up your receiver uh, afterwards by unchecking off that UART1. Sometimes guys will uncheck that and then save it and unknowingly uh, brick their board. So if you have to do that, you're gonna have to reflash it all over again because all of a sudden this USB port won't be working uh, on your computer. And if that's not working, then you're gonna have to reflash it. Um, basically, if you turn off UART1 on this board, you're going to deactivate your USB port. So uh, keep that in mind. Keep your UART1 activated there uh, in the ports tab inside beta flight or clean flight, um, very important. Now this is your 20 amp ESC layout right here. You've got your signal and wire harness coming off of here and it hooks up into that port on your flight controller and you have six tabs on each side. Uh, three, first three tabs will be for motor one. This is, that'll be M1 right here coming off to motor one. This next one up is gonna be motor two. The next three here are going to be motor three, and the next three here are gonna be up to motor four, the last motor. Doesn't matter which wires you solder up, as always, because guys, you can reverse your direction in your motor inside to be a heli suite. So the old school way to do that is if you have something turning the wrong direction, uh, you just switch two wires right here by desoldering one, switching them around, and that should actually reverse the direction of the motor. Uh, just an old school trick for some of you guys that are just getting into this. But you don't have to do that. Like I said, if you download the BL Heli configurator, you can change a reverse direction inside that and uh, flash it down to your ESCs to make your motors spin the right direction. And you can do your motor testing inside Betaflight before you go and do all that. So for right now, this is your best bet to get up to 3 and 4S with your brushless micro. In my opinion, uh, it has everything on here that I need. It has 20 amp D-Shot ESCs, F4 flight controller, OSD and all that good stuff, beta flight, uh, optional support for DSMX or PPM and SBUS, uh, probably also the IBUS for FlySky guys. And if you want to run 3S on this, it's probably okay with the JST maybe pushing it with this. You might possibly melt that, but if you want to go better, uh, bigger, go to an XT30 on this setup and you should be just fine. Uh, these ESCs will handle the voltage. It has a burst range up to about 25 amps on here. so. Uh, which battery am I using? You guys all want to know that. Which 4S battery would be my battery of choice for this setup on my brushless micro? Would be the Tattoo 450 milliamp battery right here, 4S on a brushless micro. This is the big daddy. Uh, and it also has that 
XT30 on here, already ready for my brushless micro because those guys over at Tattoo know their stuff and uh, they know the proper connector for the voltage that we're looking for. That's the one right there. So if you want to go 4S guys, there you go. That's the way to do it uh, on your brushless micro for this summer. So thanks again for watching this video. I'm Justin Davis. As always, please check this one out in the link below. I'll see you on the next one.